Go to the two.com in with the week nine predictions. A lot of inconsistency by some of the top teams in the country, but some intriguing battles taking place this coming Saturday. Let's get right into it. Auburn and Ole Miss in a very intriguing SEC battle. Last week at home, Auburn dominated Arkansas 56-3, rushing for over 500 yards of, uh, of total offense on the Razorbacks. They wore them down, jumped up to a big lead, never looked back, and dominated that matchup at home. You look at the flip side, Ole Miss tied 21 apiece at Baton Rouge in Death Valley could not close the door, and LSU pulled away for a 38-21 to victory over the Rebels. The Rebels' defensive front seven gave up a lot of rushing yards to Leonard Fournette, 284 rushing yards on the ground to Fournette, and three rushing touchdowns. If you're asking me, this looks like a tired football team. Ole Miss allowing 226 rushing yards on the ground to opposing offenses, and you look at Auburn right now, they're rushing for 302 yards on the ground. Auburn's a team that can really make some noise in the SEC West. They did lose to Texas A&M, but if they can run the table and knock off Alabama at the end of the year and get some help, they can possibly represent the SEC West as part of the champion in, in the championship game. So I think Auburn really has a, a solid defensive front seven that's only given up 198 passing yards per game. They're only giving up 129 rushing yards on the ground. I think this defensive front seven makes Chad Kelly and that offense one-dimensional, and I do think that Auburn pulls away for a 14-point road victory this coming weekend. I don't think Chad Kelly's the same quarterback. He looks like he's banged up. If you watch that second-half performance, very inconsistent. The LSU Tigers defensive front seven was able to pressure him. I look for the same this coming weekend, and I look for Auburn to wear down Ole Miss in this matchup and pick up a 14-point victory this coming weekend. Intriguing battle in the Big Ten. Penn State and Purdue. Purdue played Nebraska very tough. We said it last week that every other week, Purdue seems to step up. They have an interim head coach. They played inspired football in a team that they beat last year, 55-45 to in Lincoln. But was Nebraska looking ahead to this weekend's matchup against Wisconsin? David Blau played very well, and that offense moved the football, but they still lost lost that ball game on the road in Memorial Stadium. They're sitting at three and four. They now come back home, but that defensive front seven for Purdue is still giving up 249 rushing yards per game. You look on the flip side in Penn State, they got a monumental 24 to 21 victory blocking a field goal and knocking off second-ranked Ohio State at home in Happy Valley. It was a breakthrough victory for James Franklin and the crew. I think a lot of people expect Penn State to let down after that performance last week on the road in West Lafayette, but I don't see it. I look at this team right now, Penn State, they have the better head coach in James Franklin. They got that breakthrough victory, and their defensive secondary is playing very well this year, only giving up 183 passing yards per game. I think they match up on the outside very well with D'Angelo Yancey. The way you have to beat Penn State, you have to be able to run the football consistently. Purdue does not have a consistent running uh, rushing attack this year with Markel Jones. Very inconsistent offensive line play, and I think Penn State dominates this battle on the road. Penn State is 5-2 and two overall. They're in the top 25. I think you saw the emotional effects of Daryl Hazel's dismissal last week. Purdue played inspired football, but the better head coach and the better coaching staff at this point in the season is James Franklin, and I think Penn State breaks through with a dominating 20-point victory at home in West Lafayette. You look at this Purdue team, even though they're fighting for a bowl berth, very inconsistent. Every other week they show up I like the Nittany Lions on the road to pick up a 20-point victory on the road in West Lafayette over Purdue. Another intriguing battle is NC State and Boston College. Traditionally, these teams play very close games. Boston College has not looked good. They dropped a home game last week to Syracuse and Dino Babers. NC State got blown out by Lamar Jackson and the crew. But you look at BC's defense overall. They're only giving up 100 and two rushing yards per game, and they're only giving up 190 passing yards through the air. I think their defense will keep them in this matchup. I think that they'll look to run the football. Now, NC State's defensive front seven only giving up around 109 rushing yards per game. Very solid. But I look for Boston College to slow this game down. They're three and four on the year. 
They have an opportunity to make it to a bowl game. I think they look to play this game very close. I think Boston College is in this game from start to finish. You look at NC State, they've had three emotional games now. They beat Notre Dame three weeks ago, 10-3. to, 10 to three. They followed that up with an emotional road loss to Clemson where they uh, showed up in overtime, pushed the Tigers to the limit, and lost that battle 24-17. to 17. They then went on the road to face Lamar Jackson, a speed team, and he tore them up and really dismantled that defense. They now come back home and face a blue-collar offense and defensive line in Boston College. I like Boston College to keep this game close. In the end, I think NC State does pick up a very close victory. I think it's a seven-point victory over Boston College, but the Eagles are in this game from start to finish. Another ACC battle is Louisville and Lamar Jackson. Now they're the front runners to possibly make the top for, for the playoff this year, after that loss by Ohio State, they were sitting at number seven. Texas A&M lost to Alabama. Number two, Ohio State lost to Penn State. So now Louisville is in a position to really make some noise. But they go on the road to Charlottesville. And Virginia, under Bronco Mendenhall, playing gutty-inspired football. When you look at Louisville in this matchup overall, over the last couple of years, it's been a very close series. Louisville won last year at home third. 38 to 31. Two years ago, Bobby Petrino lost this matchup to Mike London, 23 to 21. There's no doubt in my mind that Louisville wins this game, but I think it's a lot closer than people think. I think it's about a 17-point game. I like what I see out of the team in Virginia. They're able to move the football through the air. They're passing for 268 yards per game. And I expect Virginia to be in this game from start to finish. I think it might be a two-touchdown game for much of the way. And in the end, they lose about a 17-point victory, even though Louisville's averaging 52 points per game. I think there's a tough road task for Louisville. I don't think they dominate the way they did in recent weeks. Virginia plays Louisville very close this coming weekend and loses a 17-point ball game to the Cardinals this coming weekend in Charlottesville. Another intriguing battle takes place at night in williams Bryce Stadium. Tennessee goes on the road coming out of a bye week to face South Carolina and Will Muschamp. South Carolina has played very tough at home this year. They're only giving up 21 points per game. Perry Orth and McIlwain, their quarterbacks, have interchanged, and they're starting to move the football. They picked up a pedestrian victory against UMass, 34 to 28 last week, six-point victory. But I like South Carolina in this battle at home. Not sold on this Tennessee team. They're banged up. They have a lot of injuries. They're coming out of a bye week. I think Tennessee wins this game, but I think South Carolina pushes the Volunteers to the limit. It's a rivalry game. It's a conference game. The Gamecocks will be looking to be be bowl eligible and possibly pull off the upset in Williams-Brice. Very difficult atmosphere that to play, and I'm not sold at Josh Dobbs at the quarterback position. Tennessee's defensive front seven giving up over 200 yards rushing per game. Look for Will Muschamp and the uh, Gamecocks to run the football between the tackles, and I think South Carolina loses a very close ball game. I say it's in the area of three to four points. The Volunteers pick up a three to four point victory on the road in williams Bryce. Gamecocks keep that game very close this coming weekend. Another intriguing battle in the Big 12 is Kansas State and Iowa State. Kansas State picked up a 24-21 victory over Texas. An unbelievable Texas team. An inconsistent Texas team that hasn't stepped up in recent weeks. They let Jesse Ertz beat them with his legs. They now, Kansas State, goes on the road 4-3 and three overall. People are just expecting K-State to dominate this matchup, but you look at K-State's offense, I'm still not sold on their passing attack that's averaging in the area of about 170 passing yards per game. And defensively, you can attack Kansas State secondary over the top. They're allowing 249 passing yards to opposing offenses. And I look at this Iowa State team under Matt Campbell. They're starting to get it. They have some speed on the outside. I like Lanning, Lanning and Jacob Park at the quarterback position to stretch Kansas State vertically. Ames is a very difficult place to play. And if you look at this matchup over recent years, Iowa State has played Kansas State very, very tough. 
I think the Cyclones get the victory this coming weekend over the Wildcats. I'm not sold on K-State. I think they're actually exceeding expectations. I look for the Cyclones to pull off the, the upset this coming weekend. I think it's very close. I think it's a 28-24 to Cyclone victory at home in Ames. I think Matt Campbell is a young, up-and-coming coach. He'll have his team ready. Not sold on Kansas State and Bill Snyder's crew, even though they pulled off the victory over Charlie Strong last weekend in Manhattan. I look for the Cyclones to strike the mild upset this coming weekend in Ames, 28-24. to Another intriguing battle is Boise State and Wyoming. Boise State has not looked good recently, even though they're undefeated. They got a, a methodical 28-27 to victory over BYU. They turned the ball over five times in that matchup. They're minus eight in turnover margin. That's something I don't like out of top teams in the country, but I look at this game against Wyoming. Wyoming giving up a lot of yards passing. They're allowing 299 passing yards to opposing offenses. I look at Brett Rippon. I look at that offensive line that's protecting him. And I look at the lack of pass rush out of Wyoming this year. Only 15 total sacks on the year. You look on the flip side, Boise State's uh, one of the top sack teams in the country, top third in the nation. And more importantly, I think they have a balanced offense attack that can wear down Wyoming. Boise State has not looked good in victories over BYU and Colorado State and Oregon State, but I think that this is the game that they step up and really assert their will. Both teams are 3-0 and in the Mountain West Conference. I think the Broncos get a dominating road victory against the Cowboys in this matchup. Wyoming is a run-heavy offense. If they fall behind in this game, it could be a long day. I expect Brett Rippon, and I expect the, the Broncos to jump out to an early lead and force Wyoming out of their game plan, which will allow their defense to blitz and put some pressure on that offensive line. And I think Boise State dominates this battle. I think it's close early, but in the end, Boise State picks up a 28-point victory over the Wyoming Cowboys this weekend. All of the work is up on GoForTheTwo.com. Stay with me each and every Saturday. I'll be breaking down all the top 25 battles on SB Nation Radio this coming Saturday, 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, also, uh, that's SBNationRadio.com or FantasySportsRadio.com, FantasyFNTSY.com backslash radio. Check it out this coming Saturday, 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Have some great guests lined up. College football is the best. I just love talking about it. Check out GoForTheTwo.com.